Hey guys, so there's this website called untools.co and they have what are called tools for better thinking. You can see there's systems thinking, decision making, problem solving, communication. And I was browsing this site recently and a thought occurred to me. What if, what if I take one of these tools, these decision making tools or these problem solving tools, and I tried to apply it to a game of chess. So what I'm going to do is walk you through some of these that actually caught my eye. We're going to be using this position right here as just a little example and see if we can make sense of this position using some of these decision making tools. And after we do that, and we understand these a little bit better. I'm going to actually play some games using them and see if it helps me or if it hurts me uh, as far as winning the game. So first things first, this one right here, six thinking hats actually caught my eye. It says, look at a decision from different perspectives. If we scroll down on how to use it, you can see we've got different hats. We've got the yellow hat, the green hat, the red hat, the white hat, the black hat, and the blue hat. And there's a little diagram here to kind of clarify it. And basically what you want to do is whatever decision or whatever situation you're in, in our case, it's going to be this chess game. We look at it through different lenses. So first of all, yellow hat is about positivity. Try seeing the benefits of this decision and what opportunities it opens. Okay. So black has just played the move queen to D five. We're trying to make a decision and we need to think in terms of positivity. So let's just say, for example, I'm considering the move bishop to b5. I'm like, okay, well, the benefits of this, I'm getting a nice pin on the knight on c6, and I'm threatening to potentially take this, and I have a lot of pieces lined up there. That's a positive. What's another positive? Oh, well, I'm developing this piece, uh, which is a good thing at the beginning of the game, right? What's another benefit or another positive thing? Well, I'm getting ready to castle, right? So lots of benefits and positives that come about from that move. So that's pretty good. All right, let's see what else we have. Green hat represents creativity. Let your mind run free, generate ideas without censoring them. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to say, well, yeah, there's bishop b5, but what else is there? Maybe I just trade the knight. Maybe I go here and attack this. Oh, that actually gives me another idea. Maybe I take this with my knight because if the king takes, I can go here and pin the queen. Cool. All right. Maybe I just ignore it and play d4 because I want to get my bishop out. Maybe I play f4 because I don't know why it seems kind of risky, but in this phase, in this green hat phase, I don't even care. I'm just thinking about ideas, right? Any kind of idea. What if I play c4? It attacks the queen. Seems like it's probably a blunder, but I'm just trying to come up with ideas. All right, let's see what's next. Red hat is about emotions. How do you feel about this? Use your intuition and gut feelings. Okay. My intuition tells me bishop b5 is a pretty good move i'm like it's developing i'm gonna castle i'm attacking um i am a little concerned about my knight though so that's you know maybe i need to worry about that but yeah in intuition says bishop b5 looks pretty nice or maybe just trading and doubling up black's pawns also looks pretty good so both of those moves i feel pretty good about white hat makes you focus on the data analyze the available data and trends so this one's going to be difficult in a game of chess unless it's like an opening that you've studied before or a game that you've seen like if you've studied a, a top level game and you know that a particular grandmaster played a certain way or this is the ponziani and so if you've studied the ponziani and you know oh that the main theory is to take here or it's to play bishop b5 or you know whatever that might help you otherwise that one's going to be kind of difficult i think Black hat represents looking at the downside. What are the worst case scenarios? Okay, so bishop to b5, what's the downside of this move? Well, a big downside is the knight is, is going to be captured, right? Now I am going to get a follow-up here, and it looks like a nice fork. Uh, worst case scenario with that would be something happens to my king, is what I'm thinking, right? Like worst case scenario, my bishop and queen end up over here. My queen's like stuck, and maybe black's queen along with some the bishops somehow prevent me from castling and I end up getting checkmated or like, yeah, I'm thinking like Bishop D six, I try to castle and I get checkmated. It could be worst case scenario. I mean, I'm just kind of thinking like what's, what could go wrong. Right. Um, otherwise, I mean, I don't know, maybe Bishop D seven happens and I just end up not being able to, to capture here. Like I wanted to something along those lines. All right, let's keep going. Blue hat is for controlling the process, especially in meetings. Ah, da, 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 da. Okay. For chat, for a game of chess, the way that I, kind of think of this one is sometimes people are a little bit random in their thinking, right? So like, if you're looking at this position, maybe you're like, what if I play the move H4? Hmm. Now nah, it seems like it's probably not very good. Okay. What if I, hmm. 
take this with my queen. Now it seems like it's bad. Should I? They're just kind of like all over the place. Like, why are you considering this move and then this move and then maybe this move? Like, what, what, why are you thinking about those moves? You have to have some kind of idea behind what you're thinking about. So, like, for a lot of people, it's the king. You start with the kings, right? And you just look for, can I put the king in check or checkmate? Well, no, but bishop b5 is kind of close because I can put him in check. That's one way of thinking about it. Another way is which pieces are weak or potentially could be targets. Well, my knight is weak, but this could also be a target. That's why I'm thinking about bishop b5. That's why I'm thinking about d4. The point here is you want to have some sort of method that you're following so that you're just not, your brain is just not all over the place of like, well, maybe h4 is a good move. Maybe bishop b5 is a good move. Maybe b3 is a good move. Like you want to have a reason for why you're thinking about those moves. Okay, so that's uh, kind of what I'm thinking as far as this six hat uh, tool. I think this one could actually make a lot of sense. I really like the yellow hat. I like the green hat. I like the red hat. And then I like the black hat, the white and the, the blue. Maybe, maybe we can just leave those off. So I might actually just, if I'm going to do this in a game, go for yellow, green, red, black. So think about the, the pluses for a move. Be creative. What's my intuition tell me? And then think about the worst case scenario. So I think that makes a lot of sense. All right, let's go ahead and look at another one. I'm going to go back here to decision making. This other one here caught my eye, second order thinking. And it says, consider the long-term consequences of your decisions. And in the example of how to use it, they kind of say, you know, 10 minutes, 10 months, 10 years. But I think we can apply this to chess if we say, what's going to happen in one move? What's going to happen in three or four moves? What's going to happen in 10 moves? Right? Same kind of idea of like immediately what's the result and then what could happen down the line. So for example, bishop to b5, uh, immediately we get a nice pin and immediately I'm going to lose my knight. That's what I'm seeing, right? And then I would kind of consider, okay, and what's going to happen a few moves after that? Well, uh, if we trade here, it looks like I'm getting a nice fork on the king and rook. I like that. And then if we look even further, like I was mentioning kind of earlier, I feel like my king is a bit bare, right? My king is a bit awkward. These pieces seem to be very stuck. I can't develop them. I'm not gonna be able to castle that way. I can castle this way, but like I mentioned, if the bishop goes to d6 and the queen is sitting here, that's gonna be risky. And so my concern, kind of 10 moves down the road maybe, is that my king is gonna be a bit exposed, okay? So I think that's a good way you know, to, to think about it though. Um, Bishop to c4, what happens immediately? Well, I have a nice attack here, threatening uh, you know, a fork or a check or something. The problem, if I go maybe three or four moves, is that the queen's gonna take my knight, and then guess what? My threat is now pretty much useless. Yes, I can take it, but the king just takes, and then what happens? I, I ran out of pieces, basically. I lost my knight, lost my bishop. All I have is my queen over here not doing anything. So that doesn't really make sense when I go a little bit further. So I like this one. I think this makes a lot of sense. Um, like I said, I think the easiest thing to do would be just to say, okay, what's going to happen in one move, three moves, maybe five moves. Ten moves is a lot. So let's go one, three, and five, something like that. And let's go to one more problem solving and this productive thinking model. So I thought this was pretty interesting. If you go to how to use it, there's essentially six questions or six things that you need to do. Uh, you ask what's going on. You ask what's success. What's the question? You generate some answers, you forge the solution, and then you align the resources. So if we apply this to our chess game, um, I think this question right here, number two, is really, really important. What's success? So a lot of times people, when they're playing chess, it's like, okay, you're thinking about all this stuff, but you don't ever stop to think about what is success? Like, what is the actual goal that I should be trying to, you know, complete as opposed to thinking about all these other things. So in this position, maybe we say, you know what? The goal is to figure out some tactic that takes advantage of this pin. And we, we have to figure out a way to make this work to the best of our ability. If it's bishop b5, if it's simply just taking, if it's some other move, right? If it's d4 to defend our net, like whatever it is, we have to figure that out. That could be success in this position. Or maybe it's, I want to figure out a way to develop my pieces and castle as quickly as possible, even before black does. Now that honestly looks pretty difficult in this position because of the way these are set up, but I'm just giving you an idea of like something that I might consider to be success. Or maybe it's, I'd like to keep the tension on this knight, but I don't want to lose my knight to the queen. So that's why maybe d4, or f4, or maybe there's some other move that we haven't thought about. Thinking about this is what would be success in this position, okay? And once we identify that, then we can go back and, okay, what's the question? So like once we know, you know, like let's just say, uh, we, we've decided we want to take advantage 
of the pin on this knight. All right, what's the question? How exactly do we do that? Is bishop b5 the correct move? Maybe that's the question that we focus on. Like, is bishop b5 the right move? So, um, and then generate answers, forge the solution, align resources. So uh, this align resources is kind of interesting. It could be like, okay, what resources or pieces do I have available to make this happen, right? Now, some of this for this one kind of seems like, of course, you're going to ask the question. Of course, you're going to figure out what's the best move. Of course. So this one, uh, I don't know how I feel, but I think we can still, I, I think this number two question actually makes a lot of sense. Okay, so that's the basics of the three that I want to kind of cover in this video. So what I'm going to do now, we've kind of analyzed this position. By the way, if we turn on Stockfish here, you can see the best move is actually knight takes c6. Um, it's It gets pretty wild here. I think this is a bad move for black. And because of what we mentioned, right, we do get the, uh, the fork. But black doesn't have to play that. And that's why uh, it's better to just take. Because if black plays knight to e7, slightly better for black. And uh, Ponziani has some really cool lines. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video on that later. Anyway, uh, I think we've analyzed that enough. Let me go ahead and jump into some games. And I'm going to try, when I get to like a kind of a critical moment in the game, apply these thought processes. So I'm not going to do it for the entire game. But we'll, we'll see how it works at a critical moment. All right, guys, so I just started a game here, and uh, the opening, I'm going to kind of just play normal stuff that I would play in the opening, and then once I get to a critical moment, I'm going to apply these different uh, decision-making tools. So I'm going to start by using the six thinking hats one in this game, and I'm going to focus, like I said, on those four hats. So the yellow hat, the green hat, the red hat, and the black hat. So I have them over here on the side just to kind of remind myself what I need to be paying attention to. And so once I kind of get out of the, the theory part, uh, of what I kind of already know and I'm sort of trying to make a decision on what move to play that's when I'll I'll break those out so uh, actually maybe right here is a, a good moment because I don't know what the theory is here so uh, let's just start with the top yellow hat positivity I, I mean I think d6 makes sense because I can attack the knight gains the tempo lets my bishop out I like that um, knight takes f2 you know it lures the king out but other than that it doesn't probably seem worth a piece uh, green at creativity. Yeah. So D six, definitely an idea. Knight C six could be an idea in the spirit of the Stafford gambit, just trying to get quick development. Um, any other moves F six, I don't like weakening the diagonal. So I think I'm going to throw that one out. So D six, Knight C six, uh, emotions. I mean, intuition is telling me to play D six, just kick the, the knight back. Um, but knight c6 also makes sense and then the downside yeah what's the downside of playing d6 what i'm seeing is that after white castles there's a, a rook that's going to come over but i think we have time to deal with that so let's go ahead and play d6 so i mean that takes quite a bit of time to go through all of that and so maybe speed chess isn't the the best format for this um but i wanted to get some some games in without it taking like too long and so again let's just kind of think through Bishop to e6 is what I would like to play. The positives of that is it blocks this this uh, file. Because that's really my biggest concern. Castling, the rook's going to come over. What's the downside of this? Let's go jump to the black hat for a second. d5 just kicks it away and I have to waste time. So maybe that's not awesome. Um, is there a way that I can prevent that? I can play d5 myself. Oh, and then just kind of sinks my knight in on e4. I like that, actually. Let's just play d5. So we, we gain the tempo. We kick the knight back. And now we'll play d5. And oh, I skipped the red hat, the emotions. That's okay. I don't want to lose on time. So I'm going to have to go a little bit faster. So I'm going to just try to like real quickly kind of think, what's the what's the plus? What's the minus? Think creativity, uh, creatively. And then what do my instincts tell me? So real quickly, um, let's see. The plus of this move shuts down this. What's the minus? Um, it's not really a great diagonal for the bishop. Yeah, I think plus outweighs the minus there so we'll go with that okay let me just put the green hat on while it's not my turn creativity creatively i can't say that word uh i want to play knight c6 i want to castle queen side g6 bishop g7 maybe or just move the queen and get the bishop out like this do i want to trade that do i want to play f5 i think i'll just leave it and just develop let's go ahead and do this i want to castle i'm just still concerned about this e-file i don't like both of my major pieces sitting in the center so i think yeah i think we just castle now all right, so we've solved that problem. Okay, um, let's see, what else? Black hat downside, I have to remember to do that. It's it's really difficult actually to think about these other stuff 
while I'm trying to just think about the way that my brain normally thinks about chess, it's not easy at all. Um, so yeah, I feel, I feel like maybe I need to play longer games next time, but I, I just wanted to kind of experiment with it and see you. Oh, now I'm seeing a big downside of this fork here. The good news is I do have it pinned. Well, he goes for knight g5. Okay, interesting. So maybe we just move the bishop to f5 to defend our pawn. Maybe we take this and I could take that either way, actually. Let's go ahead and take it with the knight. I'm threatening to win the queen here with knight to f3 check. So that seems like a pretty big deal. Maybe queen a4 is going to happen. I don't know, but then that bishop's hanging. Yeah, this is a tough position, I think, for white to be in. I don't really see a drawback to that move. Other than I left the pawn, but I don't care. I'm going to play knight f3 and win the queen. So, I mean, it's it's going to be a rook, a knight, and a pawn for a queen. So it's it's a lot of pieces still for white, but should should still be um, should still be a good trade. I mean, what if white plays king h1? What am I going to play then? I. Still have the discovered attack, so I could still play knight f3. So he takes that. All right, so if I go for the check, he takes, I take, he takes. I'm still going to be able to take the knight. I think it's fine. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll take the queen. We'll take this. Just have to watch out for a, a pin here. Okay, he's just going to do that. Let's go bishop d6. Start creating some threats on the king. Now I can go for a checkmate threat. There's going to be g3. I could play king to b8. Get out of this tactic and defend my pawn. I like that. I'll just do that. Just kind of play it safe for a minute. Need to go faster though. So we're going to have to start generating the attack on the king. Uh, somehow. Let's go queen. Let's play h5 first. Because I want to be able to follow up with h4 if he does play like g3. Okay. So now I can do this. It's more weak over here on the king side. Now I can go here. Just trying to create weaknesses that I can take advantage of. Obviously, with the time situation, I'm not really thinking about hats. I'm just, you know, playing with my my regular kind of thought process. So, okay, let's go for f6 and play g5. We got to break down these pawns, try to create an open file for the rook, and then white's king is going to be in trouble. All right, we'll play g5. We'll pre-move that. He's probably going to play rook d5, I imagine. That's okay. Oh, he did take it. Okay. Rook d5, maybe? Yeah. I don't really care about losing that. I just want to make sure that I'm going to get a nice attack. So I think this way is going to do it for me. Uh, it goes back there. Okay. That's a pretty good move, I guess. I'm still going to play h4. The plan doesn't really change. I got to... I got to get the king open and the rook involved. 27 seconds. Yeah, I got to play real fast here. H4. Gotta watch out for the back rank mates. And look for some sort of tactics to uh, checkmate the king here. I do have this covered though, so I can get away with taking that pawn. Let's just open up the file. I don't want to get back rank mated and I don't know what else to do. Maybe I should play here. Now that loses my queen. This is a tough uh, spot to be in with no time on the clock. Bishop f4, yeah, it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. I can still get mated, so I have to be careful. I have to be really careful here. I can start going... No, I can't. I gotta get the king out of here. Yeah, that's a problem. 
really need to get my king off the back rank so I don't get mated. Okay, so we can we can breathe a little bit there. Let's maybe I should trade the bishop. Try to push this pawn somehow. And see what we can do here. Oh, there's some lag. Okay, got the time back. That's good. <laughs> that was a bit scary. Okay, I think we got it. Take this, take this, take this. Go here. Go here. Go here. Here. Let's get some more past pawns. I don't want that to happen. Oof. So yeah, that uh, thinking hats takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. So maybe five minutes wasn't the best experiment. But I think, I mean, I think there's some potential benefits to that you think about the positives you think about the negatives you be creative which is a good sort of thing to do um and what was the other one uh, let's see da -da 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 -da. positives negatives i can't remember what was my brain is like not working what was the other one that we did positives negative oh emotional yeah just what do you what do you feel what's your intuition right 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 so yeah i think those four um make sense and We'll just start a new game and this time we are going to use the second order thinking so we're going to go for one three and five moves okay so what's going to happen in one move if i play the move that i'm thinking of what's going to happen in three moves and what's going to happen in five moves and hopefully that's going to you know, kind of give you a good idea of like, are you thinking far enough along when you're making these decisions? I think that's what the, the ultimate takeaway can be from that one. All right, here we go. Opponent is ready now. All right. Should be a pretty even game. I'm going to get through the opening uh, and then we'll we'll focus on the uh, one, three, five move decision tool. So... Most of these opening moves are just to get some quests completed. I'm not uh, necessarily playing theory right now, so don't stress about this if it looks like I'm making weird moves. Um, I'm okay gambiting a pawn here just to get my quest completed for sure. So, All right, so we almost have development completed. We're going to castle, and then we can start kind of thinking through uh, some of these things. Well, let's go ahead and castle. And C4 is a move that I'm concerned about because in one move, all right, in one move, I have to move my knight. But in three moves, there's going to be this pawn pushing forward. I have to move my bishop, and then what's going to happen to my bishop, right? So... That's a little concerning, uh, and he, he maybe he's taking away the b4 square as well from my pieces, potentially planning like some sort of pawn storm. So definitely want to start thinking through this move, c4. So what are we going to do about that? I would love to be able to play knight to f4, but I can't. I can play g5 to set that up. If the trade happens, I'm, I'm happy because then the rook can come over. So g5 actually, I think, makes decent amount of sense and so i will play g5 so you know on move one i'm just saving my knight but on move three and five if i want to continue that i'm setting up to attack the king yes i'm going to have some doubled pawns and an isolated pawn over here on h7 but that's okay i'm going to go for an attack and 
the pawn structure really doesn't matter if I get checkmate on the king, right? Okay, so one move I have to obviously save the bishop. Bishop g4, bishop h3. Bishop h3 in one move, I'm losing a bishop. But what happens if I follow that up with a check? The king goes over, the queen comes down, and rook to g1, and I don't have anything, I don't believe. Maybe there's f3, you know, then the... Hmm. Well, here's another thing I'm just noticing. I do have the battery. I don't even actually have to move the bishop. Okay, interesting position. So, yeah, lots of options here. I don't know that I can get away with that. Takes. Takes. Oh, I could take first with the queen. The point then is that... Uh, there's bishop e4, though. Bishop e4 is a very annoying move. Check. The king goes to h1. Just not seeing a good follow-up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop thinking about bishop h3. Okay, bishop g4 in one move, the queen moves, but what happens in three or five moves? F3 actually could be another move. Then I have bishop c5. Very interesting. I almost don't want to move the bishop and just go for this trade. So if I do that, I've got rook to g1, I've got bishop to f6 as an option. Uh, let's go ahead and bring the rook over, I get. The problem is I don't want to really trade queens. All right, let me think about this. I really don't want to trade queens. Okay, I'm, I'm getting an idea, guys. I'm getting an idea, and I said I was going to stop thinking about it, but I'm going to actually play it. I broke my own rule. I went back to it. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to, like, think through. When you decide it's bad, don't keep considering it but i did get another idea okay he didn't even take it interesting didn't even take it okay now i think we just bring the rook over queen can't capture because it's pinned i don't know exactly what white's going to do now probably g3 no but then i'm winning the exchange okay let's go ahead and take the exchange and let's go ahead and Raid that pawn off. Start to chip away at the king a little bit there. Let's play bishop c5. Multi-purpose move. Defends my pawn. Attacks this. Also pins that. So that I can maybe think about ideas like this at some point. Okay, where's the knight going? Probably here. Um, I could play f5 to stop that. I could play... What else could I play? Queen to g4 to take advantage of that pin. Let's do that. Let's do queen to g4. Oh, it's a it's a blunder, guys. It's a blunder. Man. He's going to trade queens and then play bishop h3. I, I was thinking I had this move, but it's a pin. That's really, that's really bad. Yeah, I'm just lost now, probably. Unfortunate. I mean, it's maybe I can hold on, but yeah, I just totally missed that. I blundered this one. See, I didn't look like for three or five moves ahead. I only looked like two moves ahead. Just forgot that. <clears throat> That's too bad. So we had a really nice position. If I would have just taken some time, probably played like king king over, we would have been doing just great. Yeah, okay. Maybe maybe we can win this pawn. Nope, he sees that. Maybe we can win this pawn. Okay. Is there a checkmate? No, I don't see a checkmate. Where's the knight going? The knight wants to go there. Let's go ahead and do this. Okay, well now I have a passed pawn that the knight's going to have a hard time stopping, I think. Knights have a hard time with um, outside pass pawns. So I just have to shut down the knight. Where's the knight trying to go to? Uh, let's see. Let's just go here and just push it, right? 
push it. Oh, he's going to sack. Okay, that's okay. That's okay, I think. All right. Hmm. Interesting. So can we... We do this, guys. I have to stop the pawns somehow. Man, I don't know what to do here. Um... I don't have time to think is the problem. That's the big problem. Man. Yeah, I just... I think I messed that up. Pretty sure there was a win there. I'm pretty sure. That's unfortunate. Alright, well we have one more... Decision. What was the last decision-making process? Let's go ahead and finish this this video off. So the last one was the problem-solving productive thinking model. So this was the one where you asked the six or the three questions and then the three other things. So six steps. The one that I want to focus on is I'll bring this over. This question right here. What's success? Like really getting to the the root of what are we trying to achieve in the position? Like what's going to be the best outcome? And I think once you get that, then you kind of follow it up with, okay, what's the, the main question? And then what are the answers? And then go from there. All right, let's give it a shot. All right, again, I'm just going to play this opening because I want to complete this quest. Ooh, should I sacrifice? Yeah, let's do it. We'll play an aggressive opening here. This is not good, but it's a blitz game. So we're going to do it. The point is that we're going to just get some tempo gains on the knights and some center control with the pawns. And, um, I mean, it's, it's really not worth a, a night, but it's, it's fun to play in blitz. Oh, he goes back. Okay. So <clears throat> what is the main thing that would be success in this position? Well, generating a very strong attack. That's why I did this. I want to somehow get an attack. So what's going to give me the best attack on the king? We can focus on this square. So I'll move like bishop c5. Or I can just go for like a huge pawn center and just push all my pawns forward. So what would I rather have? I mean, I feel like bishop c5 is a, is a good diagonal. Because d4, I can on passant. Oh, that's actually not as good as I... Maybe I do just want to go for this huge pawn center. Let's do that. Let's just throw a bunch of pawns out there. I feel like that's going to give me a good chance for an attack. Especially since white just played this move going back. It's going to take them a while to finish developing, right? D3, I was expecting that. I'm thinking F5, just keep the, the pawns out there. F5, takes, takes. Uh, do I have to worry about check? I'm going to play G6. There's queen E5. Yeah, I do have to worry about that. So, <clears throat> I guess I have to actually take that, unfortunately. Okay, so let's take it. Let's play... Knight c6, I guess. We'll just develop. And we still have a decent center here. We have some threats here. And white's a little bit behind because of the, the knight. Now it's coming out. Okay. Let's go ahead and play bishop. Let's see. Where do I want the bishop to be? What's going to help me generate uh, the biggest attack, right? That's what I'm trying to go for. It looks like white's castling this way for sure. So I want to launch my pawns. I don't want to get into trouble on the e-file. I mean, you know what I'll do? Maybe I'll play bishop e6 first. Actually, will I do that? Yeah, I will. Because I'm not sure about this bishop. So sometimes if you're not sure, you develop another piece instead. And it gives you some time to see what's going to happen. And then you can make a decision. Okay. I think bishop d6 now is okay. And now I, I want to do like something like this. I got both bishops aimed that way. Need to get the pawns rolling. I have good center control. And so I think we can generate a nice attack. Ideally, I want to do it without trading too many pieces. Okay, so he does have the pin. I have to watch out for this right here. That pawn's undefended. 
queen c7, queen d7, castles. I don't want a castle. Doesn't help me attack on the king side. So I want to play queen c7, I guess. Generating a little battery here. Getting ready to castle, which solves this problem. As well as keeps the rook over here ready to go with these pawns. So yeah, I think that's a good plan. Uh, all right, what else might, let's see, what else is success in this position? Not losing on time. So I'm going to use that knowledge to move faster. Okay, the knight's coming in. I think we have to just give it up and get the king out of there. There's, there's really no question here. It's unfortunate, but it's fine. We can still generate an attack, I believe. It's more important to not have my king stuck in the center um, than it is to try to save a pawn uh, in that sense. I already sacked a piece. At this point, material doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is can I generate... Oh, he took with the rook. That was unexpected. That was a good idea. I did not expect that. All right, well, um, it doesn't really change my plan. I mean, my plan is going to be... The same. Keep trying to attack. And what I don't like about that is it, it forces more of a trade, right? It forces a pair of rooks off, which uh, I didn't consider. Okay, we have 95, we have 94, we have g6, h5, h4, we have rook f8, rook e8. Any other moves? I don't know if I said c4. 95 looks like the most natural because it brings this knight closer to where I would like it to go. The center of the board, also attacking the king. Um, This rook definitely needs to move too, though. I think it can be more effective maybe over here. All right, let's, let's start with the knight move. Actually, there is queen f5. What happens on queen f5? Then I have to move my queen somewhere. I could play g6 and prevent. Let's play g6. Because after this, queen f5 looks like it's really close to forcing a queen trade. Or at least forcing my queen away. Now I can play here. There's queen f4. Queen f4. Hmm. The point is if, if white's able to just simply trade queens, then I don't really have anything. So I'm trying to prevent that. I still have this move. I can do it at any point, really. So let's try this instead. I'm taking away the obvious queen move, and then I want to play knight e5. That's why I did that. And I mean, I want, probably wanted to move my rook here anyway to just get some pressure on the f pawn. Okay, he goes for that. Now I think we can finally do this. Also, c4 check knight, then I can go to d4. Well, we'll do this. Queen's gonna move, and I might play c4 and bishop c5 check, or. Well, let's, let's see where the queen goes first. That's gonna determine what I do. I mean, in some cases. Okay, no. All right, yeah, c4 kind of shuts down the queen, pushes the bishop back. Alternatively, I just sacrifice. Ooh, what if I just take, take, take? Rook of one, no, let's play c4 first, because I want to have this as an option. And maybe we sacrifice here. If the bishop goes to f1, takes, takes, takes. Queen f2 is the threat, bishop to e3. Oh, he goes to e2. He doesn't want to allow that. Okay. Um, I don't know. h5. We'll just go for the knight. Try to push it to h3. Undermine this. It seems like the queen is misplaced now. You do have to be careful, I guess, for this move. But I can play b6. It should be 4. Okay. So... I have to take it. We'll keep pushing here. And 
I guess the knight goes back. Oh, there's this move. Just saw that. Oof. Can't allow that. It just loses a piece. I still want to play h3. Yeah, it's tough now. So many pieces have been traded. It's it's not going to be easy to win this now. Well, I did play a very dubious opening, so this is what you get when you play bad openings against good players. This is what you get. I don't know. I don't have time. I just got to hope that this somehow works. Knight's going to come in, and I'm going to... What am I going to do? Just trying to defend all the threats that black has. Oh, that doesn't defend this one, though. Should I let him smother checkmate me? I'll let him. I'll let him do it. That's not even... It's not actually smothered mate. Just losing a queen. Smothered mate wouldn't have worked, but this works. Yeah, okay. Good game. So... Honestly, guys, it's not easy. It's not easy to play chess and think about like all these decision making frameworks so i don't know maybe it helped you maybe you can take some of those and uh you know like if this helps you to ask these questions or you know some of the things that we talked about if you can incorporate it in your games take it use it if it helps you if it doesn't well um i just thought it was interesting and i wanted to try it it seems like it's there's so much already going on with chess that I, I, yeah, I just don't feel like I have time to like incorporate all this. But if you're starting brand new as a new chess player, hey, maybe you know some of these these models can can be helpful. So anyway, let let me know what you guys think. And uh, as always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.